Hey guys, it's Ann Yorks from The Flower Box and today I have a tropical cookie set to show you how to make. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a large monstera leaf, a really fun hibiscus cookie, my favorite cookie, the toucan, a palm tree, and a flamingo. These colors are summery. This cookie set is bright. Grab your sunglasses and your icing bags and let's cookie it up. This cookie set has a nice mix of simple cookie designs and a few cookie designs that are more impressive to look at. But this Monstera leaf, this is one of those designs that's going to come together a little bit easier. It is a one color cookie and it really is a pretty simple outline and flood. Now I'm using a tip number two for the outline and I have a glowing green icing in my icing bag. I'm adding just a few little cutouts to the leaf before I flood it in and then we're going to get started with that flood icing. Now if you're new to cookie decorating and you're not sure how to make your piping and flooding icing, definitely check out the Cookies 101 blog post on flowerbox.com for a video on making royal icing. Now because I want to see that vein down the middle of the leaf, I do want to flood that one section first, let that dry in front of the fan for about an hour, and then come back and flood the second half of the leaf. Now you could add details to this, you could add more veins, you could personalize this leaf, but this is one cookie that will keep your decorating time low this summer by just keeping it super simple. It's a great filler to the platter. The hibiscus cookie is lots of fun. This is a cookie that we're going to use a two-part stencil. You can find that stencil on flowerbox.com. It is available also in the new tropical kit where you'll find all of these cutters. But we're gonna make sure we flood the base of this hibiscus cookie nice and full first. We want a really flat, even surface to stencil on. If you don't do a full flood, you might see some dips and valleys in the icing surface. Make sure you're nice and generous with that. Now because this is a two-part stencil, and I'll show you why in a second, we're going to actually airbrush the first section, which is the petals of the hibiscus leaf. I'm doing this one in pink, but I also did it in purple and also in a blue color. So you can really have fun with the airbrushing, add in some new colors to your palette, make it really colorful, orange, yellow. Um, just have a lot of fun without having to mix any extra icing colors. Once that background has a chance to dry, allow that airbrush color to dry, it's time to stencil on with blue icing, Aloha Summer. So I'm just using the piping icing out of my bag, it's stiff enough, and I'm going to spread that icing evenly over the surface of the Aloha Summer stencil. I'll gently lift to the side and pull up to reveal that cookie. That looks so pretty. That was so quick and easy. Those colors are so fun and bright and summery. If you want to add a little bit of depth and interest to this cookie, you could outline those flower petals using your pink icing. That definitely adds something to the cookie. It just looks so cool and it doesn't take a lot of extra effort. I outlined the petals on the other cookies too and I even did a contrasting color on one of the cookies and it looked really neat. So have fun exploring that. Now my first attempt on this cookie, unfortunately, was not successful. Let me show you the mistake that I made so that you don't make it as well. I stenciled those petals first not successful. I just didn't have a flat surface. The airbrushing the flower petals worked so much better because it gives you a nice flat surface to stencil those letters. Much more successful. So when you're making these hibiscus flowers, definitely airbrush that first layer so you have a nice flat surface. Let's take a look at this flamingo cookie. This cookie is using two shades of that hot pink icing. So I have a pastel pink and I'm going to outline that flamingo's body using tip number two. I'm just using an S curve for that neck. 
just to create that thin little area. You can see that's one example of when I don't follow the exact shape of the cookie just because I want that nice, elegant neck shape that flamingos are known for. Then I'll flood in the main body of the flamingo and we're going to do a little wet on wet. So while this light pink icing is still wet, I'm going to add some feather detail for the wing. So I have the dark hot pink flood icing. I'm going to add four lines of that and then I'll also add four lines of the white flood icing. Now because everything is still wet, those lines are just going to melt into the body of the flamingo and I'll use the tip of my scribe tool to just run through those lines to marble those lines and just give that really pretty feathered look. This is one of those details that's really fun to do and doesn't take a ton of effort. Now let's add the beak. That is our golden yellow flood icing. I'm just adding that shape on the front of the bird. And then I'll add a large white dot for the eye and a smaller black dot. Notice the placement of that black dot. I really keep it toward the front of the white dot so it looks like the flamingo is looking forward instead of centering that black dot in the center of that white. I just think that gives a nice detail to that flamingo's face. Now this cookie is almost done. We're gonna add a couple simple details. Again, this is one of those cookies that doesn't take a ton of effort to pull together. Let's add the legs. I'm using the piping icing with the golden yellow icing inside of it. And I just add some feet. You'll notice those, what I think of our knees are actually the flamingo's ankles, which is kind of a little fun flamingo fact there. So if those flamingo legs look funny to you, they are possible. <laughs> now let's add a cute little hibiscus flower to the ear of the flamingo and that pretty detail finishes off that cookie. The palm tree is so much fun to make. This is one of the first summer cookies I started making when I first decorated cookies. And I think the reason I love it so much is because of the big chunky icing for those palm leaves. So I outlined and flooded in the trunk of the palm tree. I put a tip number 67. This is a leaf tip. You can also find it in the tropical kit on my glowing green icing bag. And I'm just giving a nice strong hand squeeze on the bag as I wiggle that icing side to side. That wiggle just adds lots of fun movement and texture to those leaves and it just makes for a really fun design. I like this way of doing the leaves versus piping and flooding just because of that big chunky texture. Now you can also add some coconuts to your palm tree. I'm just using the brown icing. Originally I had sketched this cookie to have a light brown icing and then when I was making my icing I felt like I had enough icing colors so I decided to just use one single brown icing for this cookie set so those coconuts do match the brown icing of the trunk. Then a little texture on the trunk of the palm tree, just some X's going down. You could hit this with an airbrush or add a, a different detail, but to be honest, that one comes together pretty quick. Less decorating, more summer fun. There you have it. Here is our final cookie for the set. This is the toucan, and this is by far my favorite cookie to make. When I first sat down and sketched out this plan, I was a little nervous about this cookie, and just sketching it out gave me a lot of confidence that I could decorate this and that it wouldn't come together uh, without too much stress. So definitely sketch your cookies before you get started just so that you have a plan and you feel confident going into it. All of the outlines on the bird are black icing with tip number two, except for that wing I did in the hot pink. Then I'm ready to flood in the body using the black flood and I'm gonna add some colorful 
feathered detail at the base of the bird using the blue, pink, and yellow. Again, let's run the scribe through those to create that feathered look and just make sure that those icings are wet when you add them on there so they come down nice and flat. Now the black icing is still wet. I'm gonna come in and add the eye area so that that will all flow together to create one flat surface. So flood in that little half circle with white, then add a large dot for the blue eye, a black dot, and then another white dot for the catch light. I love creating eyes in that way. I just think they're so pretty and colorful and it's really just a wet on wet, you can totally do it. After that section has a chance to dry in front of the fan, I'm adding the colorful beak. I start with the center yellow, that's a golden yellow. Then I'm using the sapphire blue and I'm gonna finish off with the hot pink and then add that pink wing. Now if you're looking for more details on the icing colors that are featured on this set, definitely check out the blog post on the Tropical Kit page. That will give you some additional information on the colors that I use to create these fun tropical cookies. That black line has just a slight curve to it on the beak, just because I wanted my toucan to look like he was smiling. This cookie is almost done. I'm adding some small scallops to the wing using tip number two. That just adds some feather detail and some texture to this cookie, and then it is done. I hope you had so much fun watching how to make these five tropical cookies. If you are interested in recreating them, I would be so flattered. Check out that tropical kit on flowerbox.com. And if you make these cookies, tag me at the flowerbox shop. I would love to see what you make. Until next time, happy decorating.